Hello everyone. So let's start off with a new topic. Now that we're done with clubs and manufacturing, we can start with business purchases. Okay, now business purchase is an interesting topic because that's something that we see around the world where we see one company is buying another company. And we do hear this on the news and all, all around us, but let's also try to figure out that how the accounting process will be done for a business purchase. So when I talk about a business purchase, I'm assuming there is a limited company, which is somewhat larger in size, and it wants to buy off another business. All right. So this limited company wants to buy this business over here. Now this business can be a sole trader that a company wants to buy off a sole trader. A company can also buy off a partnership or a company might be buying another company as well. Now for this syllabus, we will be focusing much more on the first two items. That is a company buying sole trader and a company buying partnership. Most questions might focus on partnership over here. All right. So now the idea is this, that we have one company, we can call this company that is buying the other one to be the buyer. So this guy will be the buyer and this guy will be the seller. All right. And then they will eventually consolidate to become a large company. And our job over here will be to understand their accounting process, how to process this in our accounting books. Okay. We can also have another case, something that is very common. So we can also see that a partnership would want to eventually convert into a company. All right. So the same partners would now want to shift from a partnership status and become a limited company. So we will also discuss the case where a partnership would want to convert into a limited company. You guys might recall that a partnership would want to attain the limited liability status where it shields itself from any unlimited liability, they would also want to convert to become a limited company. So from accounting point of view, that also becomes this case where a new limited company will be formed, which will be the buyer and the seller will be the partnership. All right. And we will go through the accounting for the buyer and through the seller both. So we have to take the buyer perspective and the seller perspective. Sometimes we can have both these perspectives in one single question. Okay. So let's discuss this a bit more. All right. Now the most important thing to discuss over here is the purchase consideration. Purchase consideration is the price that the buyer will pay to the seller. All right. So that's the buying price we can write to be the purchase consideration. Now a company can buy another business using any of these sources. They can pay it through cash or bank. They can issue shares so they can give shares to the owners of that business and they will own shares in the new consolidated company. They can also issue debentures. So the owners of the business can also get debentures in return for selling off their business. So any of these sources can be used for purchase consideration. In the next video, I will discuss the calculations for purchase consideration as well. But these are some of the common sources, which is cash and bank. You can give shares and you can also issue debentures to the sellers. Remember, this is being issued by the buyer or being paid by the buyer to the seller. Okay. Now, some important points to note. At the time that the sale is taking place, the buyer might not agree with the seller's valuation of the assets. So the buyer might use the concept of fair value. So fair value is the valuation placed by the buyer on the assets of the seller. Remember fair value is only and only used from the buyer's point of view. The seller will agree with the value of those assets stated in his statement of financial position, but the buyer will calculate a fair value. That is the value from the buyer's point of view for the assets being taken over. And the price that is being paid, we have called that to be the purchase consideration. All right. So purchase consideration is the price that the buyer will pay to the seller and fair value will be the value of those assets that the buyer is acquiring from the seller. Now, usually at the time of the sale, the buyer ends up paying more than the fair value of assets being taken over because the seller will be paid a premium in order to sell his business until and unless the business is not doing well and the seller wants to get rid of that business. The difference 
that is paid between the fair value of these assets and the purchase consideration, the price at which the business is being bought off is called goodwill, something that we discussed back at AS level as well. Okay, so goodwill is the difference between the fair value of the assets taken over and the purchase consideration. So let me explain this with a simple example. So let's say that a buyer wants to buy this business from the seller. The seller currently has non-current assets worth 100,000. Now all these values are their fair value. So when I talk about fair value, I mean, you guys should note this down that I'm talking about fair values. Fair values is that this is the valuation placed by the buyer on these assets. So the buyer says that if I buy this business, I will get non-current assets worth $100,000 and current assets worth $50,000. We're keeping it simple. So let's say the buyer is not taking over any liability at the moment. In the future videos, we will take a look when liabilities are taken over, but at the moment only assets are being taken over. Now, the buyer by buying this business will get its assets increased by 150,000. That's 150, right? But the purchase consideration that was agreed between the buyer and the seller is 175,000. So you're buying assets worth 150, but you end up paying 175. So what's the difference? You're paying a higher price. That difference or the premium that you're paying is called goodwill. Yeah, so this 25,000 over here becomes the goodwill. This is also an asset for the buyer. So the seller gets a gain. He is realizing a profit by getting this 25,000 extra. But this goodwill will also be recorded as an asset for the buyer. Why is that? Because the reason why he has paid this extra money is that he expects to generate future economic benefit by obtaining this business and its name, which is why the buyer has agreed to pay more than the value of assets to the seller. Otherwise, the buyer would never pay this amount until and unless he just wants to give him a favor but I will not consider that in logical accounting, right? So the reason why the buyer is paying more is that there is goodwill arising over here, which we have discussed back in AS level. Now let's see the reasons why goodwill can arise. All right, so some of the reasons why goodwill could arise or the reason why the buyer is willing to pay more than this is that the buyer expects that a large number of customers will continue with the new owner, which is the buyer in this case, if he buys this business, the buyer feels that the business has good reputation and it's worth it to acquire this business, right? Which is why Elon Musk wanted to buy Twitter as well. I mean, when you buy Twitter, that comes with its reputation as well. The business workforce is experienced. So by acquiring the business, you also get this new workforce that is worth paying this money for. The business is situated in a good location, which again attracts customers, adds to value. The business has good relationship with suppliers. There can be other reasons as well. But these are all reasons why the buyer will be willing to pay more than the value of net assets acquired. All right. Okay, so in this chapter, we'll take a look at different cases. A limited company could be buying a sole trader. Again, you can pay off a sole trader by cash. You can issue shares or debentures. But if you're paying more than the value of its net assets, that will be recorded as goodwill in the books of the new consolidated company. Similarly, if a limited company is purchasing a partnership, we will also record that in our books. We will also draw the realization account, something that we learned back in dissolution of partnership that will again be drawn to calculate uh, the profit or loss for the partnership. But again, if the limited company is paying a higher price than what was the net assets acquired, it will again be recorded as goodwill in the books of the new consolidated limited company. Okay, just to conclude it, let's also discuss some of the advantages and disadvantages why a company would want to acquire another business or a partnership would want to convert into a limited company. So let's just discuss that briefly. Okay, so let's first talk about why a partnership would want to convert into a limited company. So in this case, there isn't a new business coming, but the same existing partnership is being converted into a limited company. Obviously with that, you will obtain limited liability. So there will be some 
legal shield given to the partners there is a possibility of raising more capital when you become a limited company it becomes easier to raise money through shares or debentures something that you could could not have done with a partnership the ownership is transferable which again allows you to to bring in other people into the business the disadvantages would be there is more legal formalities you will be subject to scrutiny of different regulations uh the securities and exchange companies in different countries because when you become a limited company the rules and regulation might differ there are greater expenses to maintain it becomes a bit expensive you, you might have to get an audit done you may lose control when other people walk in that is also true in this case Okay so now we can discuss why a limited company would want to buy another business there can be many reasons why it would want to do this the shareholders might receive a higher dividend so another way to expand is that you buy b- other businesses which will allow you to increase your revenue base it will allow you to increase your profits and it will also give the sh- the shareholders higher dividends so besides organic growth the other mode to grow is always buying other companies which is also called external growth you can have improvement through synergy effects so your your buying power might increase you might get higher discounts from supplier you will realize economies of scale which helps you maximize your profit as well in this case the partners experience and methods may bring in additional benefits so if you acquire a partnership the partners will come with experience which will be beneficial to the firm the goodwill remember you're paying for the name of that new business it will bring in additional revenue customers will come in efficiency will improve you you will also get access to a wider market range right these are some of the reasons why companies would want to grow through external growth by acquiring other businesses all right so now from the next video let's start with with some of the calculations and how to record this about in your books